People are arguing over whether or not this is cool. Why is commuting to work in Chongqing so hard? So I start by heading down my 18-story apartment with no elevator, but thankfully I only need to go down a few stories because the ground floor is on the 12th floor. Too bad for those folks live down there. They have to climb up and sunlight is like a luxury for them. Next, I enter a subway station that feels like an entrance of a fallout shelter. Then comes the subway that looks like a roller coaster ride, and the train casually goes through a residential building. And here it goes through another residential building, because why not? Finally, I get over the city square. Solid ground at last, right? I saw people sewing over this, but like, I don't know, giving it a look, I feel like it would be really depressing and exhausting. You know? Like, you're always surrounded by concrete towering above you. It's kind of gloomy and unclean. Maybe part of it's like the weather, but I think a lot of it is also just, it seems like you're just being inundated nonstop. Also, this is a really shitty public square. I, kn I know the square. It's on top of a building. He's like 20 stories up or something. But it's just a huge open space. Like, where's the stuff you know that's the problem when you build these cities so massive and so quickly they don't have the time to develop into this rich urban tapestry you know like that's one of the nice things about i mean you go to any older city like a big old city you know you go to like tokyo mexico city paris uh the parts of london that weren't completely obliterated by the blitz uh, new york you know even chicago which isn't that old but you can find these areas where it's like okay i can see how generations of people have built out this area and made it rich and vibrant but here it's like a, a lot of these cities got built so quickly that it's it's you know you kind of feel like every everything just got struck down in a map editor you know what i mean the ccp just went like ka -chunk, ka -chunk, ka -chunk, and built everything i get over the city square solid ground at last right Nope, I'm actually on the 22nd floor. This would also be very anxiety inducing for me personally as somebody who's not a huge fan of heights. Of my office building, there's heavy traffic. No, Chongqing has a 3000 year old history. Okay, Cedar Zhao YouTube. I'm not saying I don't know the history of this city specifically. Are you telling me that this urban development we're looking at wasn't like really quickly stamped down? Because I'd be willing to bet it probably was. Like, I doubt the building they're on is 3000 years old. <laughs> you know, that's kind of the issue. If you build everything up above the ground, it's like up until very recently, everything was built on the ground, right? So you're kind of limiting yourself to recent development, you know? Traffic all the way down there by the riverside. It's time to get off work. <sighs> that subway's too much for me. Maybe the bus will be more relaxing. And somehow the bus takes me 20 stories up in the sky. God, that looks anxiety inducing. Oh, sorry, it's like a meme at the end. Why is community- I get it. Yeah, this this would make me a little nervous. Lots of plants down there. How would you suggest improving these cities? Oh, dude, I don't know. That's a big question. I don't know anything about, like, the city. It'd be I'd kind of be, like, a little presumptuous of me. I don't know. I, I for, like, for me, per okay, so obviously these are, like, not the best apartments like you're not gonna accuse me of being an american chauvinist if i if i say this i hope i mean it looks a little ramsh i get it it's china they only recently developed out of you know i mean they, they've built up pretty recently but like i mean he kind of says it right here i mean with no elevator but thankfully i only need to go down a few stories because the ground floor is on the 12th floor too bad for those folks live down there they have to climb up and sunlight is like a luxury for doesn't that sound kind of bad? I don't know. That, that sounds kind of bad to me personally. I guess for me, the main thing that I could go for is like breathing room here. In every one of these shots, I feel like I'd be like gasping for air. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like I, I feel like uh, like constrained by the by the by the environment. You know? Yeah. I mean, it's still pretty cool. It's not like it's not uncool. It's just I don't know. It, it feels kind of like as a human being, I would feel a little bit, I would feel like here as well, you've got like these roadways and trams and everything. And it's like, okay, but these are just like loops to, for vehicles to go through, you know? I don't know. It doesn't look like a very human space. That's true, Any. Yeah, not very dis disability accessible. And then you've got the big open square. And this, this to me just looks awful, personally. Like, th like th this just so like, oh, you're up on the big square, time to walk one mile on the roof of a building to the other side of the square. 
and you don't see any like trees or mountains or natural environment or anything. You just see like some shot, I assume shops or like little businesses or something uh, around the perimeter and the, the, the skyscrapers. The skyscrapers look cool. I just kind of wish that this was like a park. Wouldn't it, they could put a park up here and do a lot. That would be good. There's room. Maybe it's like a weight limit thing because like dirt and trees weigh a lot, you know, but that would be nice if there was a park up here. Even some like paths. I don't know. Maybe it would like cut into the, you know, the like the efficiency of the routes you could take. I don't really know. Square solid ground at last, right? Nope. I'm actually on the 20. Like this too. It's like if I was down there, I feel like I'd feel suffocated. And up here, I also feel like I'd feel suffocated. Does that make sense? Note how the sky in all these pictures is gray and depressing. Well, that's just that's just like the weather. I mean, that's not really, I don't know. Like, London is always gray and depressing, but there are parts of London that are supposed to be... Pr I mean, I've never been to London, but there are some parts of it that look pretty, you know, pretty cool. You would be suffocated because of the poor air quality. Hasn't China been working a lot on their air quality? Like, they've been making a lot of progress on it. The air quality index isn't that great. I mean, it used to be, like, wretchedly bad. And I think now it's in... Like, okay, 147 is bad. Don't get me wrong. And it looks like it goes down to like in the 80s or something around here. But like, I'm pretty sure that in large parts of China in, in early 2000s or like 2005 or six or something, you would have cities that were just always 300. I'm not saying it's good. I'm just saying that I think the average in Los Angeles is like around 100. It's not that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the it's not that different from L.A. I mean, for me, it's bad because in Seattle, it's really good. Washington is really, really clean air, you know? Uh, so when I go down to L.A. now, I'm like, <laughs> you know, I me, me like being driven by by one car, <laughs> you know, uh, it, it's just my it's I'm just used to the clean air up here now, which I, I do like quite a bit. Seattle is clean air and good tap water. You guys are lucky. Yeah, it's a very pretty, it's 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 a very Beijing average annual AQR. That's really good to be averaging just a decade ago, like 160 and then bringing that down to under 100. That is, that's in Beijing too. That's really good. I get that, Bikoi. It's just like the video shown here kind of just gives me the feeling that I'd be, you know, feeling a little off. That makes sense, the radical dino. Yeah, you know, you want, you want, you want it to to be good for uh, for the the CCP. The pollution makes the LA sunsets more beautiful. I gotta say, I disagree. In in Seattle, the sunsets over the Cascades, and it's gorgeous every time with basically perfect air quality. I only believe that the pollution made the sunsets better when I lived in LA. It turns out they're beautiful everywhere. <laughs> Actually, on the twenty second floor of my office building, there's heavy traffic all the way down there by the riverside. That looks like it could be a bit nicer down there. That, that looks a little better. Oh, look, there's hearts. We love something. Look, they're in English. They're they're traitors to the Chinese communist cause. Look, they're saying something in English, I think. It's kind of hard to tell. It's time to get off work. <sighs> that subway's too much for me. Maybe the bus will be more relaxing. It's It's cool. I just think this would, like, make me feel bad if I had to deal with it day to day. I don't know. The sun rises over the cascade. Did I mix up the cascades and the Olympi the Olympian range? I think I mixed up the cascades and the Olympian range. Okay, yeah. It, the sun sets over the Olympian range. The Olympics. Yeah. Not to be confused with the uh, sports tournament. And somehow the bus takes me 20 stories up in the sky. That's cool, but like, I don't like it in, in the Dallas interchange. Or what is it? The Houston interchange? That gigantic where it goes up really high? Uh, I don't know. But why? I don't know. I'm not a city planner. Why the f are they up so high? It's because it's cool. Because they're better than you, a U.S. toy dog. Yeah, yeah. Vosh saying positive things about China. Tanky Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I will say sometimes, like people, uh, like people are on the left, but they're not tanky, so they're like, you know, okay, well, China's bad. And China is bad, but people sometimes overcommit to that position, and then they're like, okay, well, everything in China, these cities are all dystopian, and like. 
No, they're not. Dystopian's a pretty heavy word. When I think dystopian, I think Los Angeles, where everything is like one or two stories because of horrible zoning laws. And if you want to get anywhere, you need to drive for 15 hours. And it's just ugly and disgusting everywhere. And it smells bad. Every like, there, and there's no charm or life. That, to me, feels dystopian. And in China, like, there are, there are like those giant apartment blocks in China that extend on forever and ever. But it's, it's a legitimately impressive, you know... It is very impressive, you know, It's and, and they've done a lot of good, too. If you had a country with 1.4 billion people, wouldn't you also want to build out, like, a bunch of apartment buildings and cities that are basically empty, and for when the population grows, the people go out there? I guess it's probably better to do that than to just go, like, what America is doing, and they're like, no, actually, we're not going to build anything, because the only reason our housing companies build stuff is if they think they'll make a massive return on it, and they'll only make that return, like, if they cooperate with the zoning policies allotted by local governments which don't want new properties built because the boomers who own the houses there already don't want their housing prices depreciated because everyone treats housing as a speculative asset like i feel like that's probably worse than what china's doing i mean you can just go visit china the radical dino you're going to have to forgive my paranoia i don't want to visit china because i think they would 1984 me maybe like one percent chance they would not I mean, not necessarily it's just like i don't know they have disappeared public figures before right didn't they give shit to that girl with the we the trans girl with the uyghur muslim uh girlfriend didn't we see that there was like a the Wait, was she trans? I don't remember. She was like lesbian and the, there was the Uyghur Muslim girlfriend and she got like disappeared for, she's not, okay, the, she had big titties. That's right. Usually those are like not an overlapping. Anyway, um, and, and she got like vamoosed for six months or something. Yeah, that's what I was saying. The radical dino. Um, Naomi Wu. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I didn't want to visit Gaza before as well when I did the GoFundMe for the PCRF. You know, Steve Sozaby was like, you want to visit Gaza? And I was like, that would be a very formative experience. But I think the IDF, I don't think they would kill me. I just think there's a 1% chance they would. The IDF loves killing journalists, American or otherwise. Like, you know, this was even before October 7th. I just, you're American, I think you're good. They've killed American citizens even before October 7th. I, I just, I, I value my life. I call me a baby. You know, I'm not an on the ground journal. I'm not Dylan Burns. Okay. I'm not fully like uh, there are, you know, I'm here. I'm a, I'm just in, I'm a white boy in my white boy chair. Baby, call me a little baby man. You know, I'm not a bottom. So, you know, I'm not getting off to it. I just own what I am. I know what I am. I'm not ashamed. You cannot hit me with what I wear as my armor. I'm a little baby bitch boy. You know, you're not going to catch me in Beijing getting followed by men with sunglasses. It's, I don't want it. I don't, I don't want to visit Gaza and, and be walking like back through the checkpoint, like up to the perimeter fence. And I see some guys with sniper rifles and they're like looking at me. I don't want that. I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to. White boy status confirmed. How selfish of you to, to, to deny the fine people of China my presence. Yes, you're right.